Michigan's down 12 to 10. Michigan's the better team that year, it looks like. And they're down there the last bit, last few seconds, 33-yard field goal, but from a rotten angle. You're on the far hash mark, and you're also in close. So when the ball's in the 16 uh, and you're kicking this field goal, that is about the worst place to be. Farther back would probably be easier for Landry in this case. But you're lined up, and the Michigan bench is right behind you. So they can all see this. Now, back then, the uprights were not that high. I think Mike Landry forced them to increase the distance because they couldn't tell what had happened. They line it up. They kick the kick. He boots all of it, man. He hammers this thing. So much adrenaline going. I'm sure he just put his whole weight into that thing. He kicks it so high that the refs can't tell if it's good or not. Everyone's watching this thing, of course. And they wait for an agonizingly long time. They seem to look back and forth. And as Bo told me, let me tell you right now, those refs knew where they were refing. They were refing in Columbus that game, and that mattered. Who can say? But they wait, they wait and wait, and they finally look at each other and go, no good. He had missed by inches, they claimed. I've seen that thing on tape, and the tape's not perfect. I have seen letters from Ohio State fans sitting in that section to Mike Lantry and to Bo Schembechler. And they all said the same thing, that that kick was good. He probably missed the 58-yarder by a few inches. He probably missed the 44-yarder. That 33-yard kick, he made it. And think about this. If the refs made what I think was probably the right call and you make that kick, you're not this tragic hero. You're Dan Jensen, the famous speed skating guy in the Olympics, that you came back and you did the thing and the whole nation's on your side. Instead, you're known for these three kicks, really the two kicks. And it's undeniably sad. It's heartbreaking. More heartbreaking than that was seeing Mike Lantry on the bench by himself, head down in his white jersey, and no one consoling him, which is not like Michigan, I would say. Probably they want to leave him alone to his thoughts. But the cruel part was there's 16 seconds left, and you got to play him out, and the camera's on you with your head down. That has to be about as sad as football gets. One of the saddest scenes I've ever seen. He got letters from Buckeye fans not only saying that he'd made the kick, but also saying that our heart went out to you at that time. Woody Hayes says this after Ohio State wins the game. Woody Hayes is not known for his compassion uh, in victory or defeat. For him to say that says a lot, I think. I've talked to, um, <clears throat> after one of my speeches on the Bo Schembechler book that I wrote with Bo Schembechler, a guy comes up to me afterwards and says, I was a student during those two games in 73 and 74. I made part-time money by driving a Michigan bus. During this time, I happened to be driving the Michigan bus that went back to uh, the building, the football building, after that game. Everyone gets off the bus, except for the guy in the back. The guy in the back is Mike Lantry. Mike Lantry stayed on that bus for many minutes after that game was over. This is hours after the fact. That's how devastated he was, and the bus driver, to his credit, did not ask him to leave. So the final scene of that story is Mike Lantry sitting on that bus for minutes and minutes after everyone else gets off. If that doesn't break your heart, nothing's going to in football.